Krauss and I'm from AlloyTutors.com and in this video we're going to look at the shapes of molecules uh, and this one's the third part um, where we look at molecular ions and um, there are two other videos as well which looks at the shapes of molecules when you have uh, no lone pairs of electrons uh, and there's part two as well where it looks at molecules where they do have lone pairs of electrons now this video, in this video, I'll assume that you know uh, how to work out bond angles um, from that. So if you're not sure on how to do that, then just click on the links just below there um, and you'll be able to have a look at them videos first. Um, and then some of the ideas from here have actually stemmed from them videos. And so this might make a little bit more sense if you do that first. So we're going to start and look at um, these ones first. So we have Molecules which actually have ions on them, or they're molecular ions, so they actually have a charge. They mean they've got a negative charge or a positive charge. Now, some molecules can have more than one negative charge, and some molecules can have more than uh, one positive charge as well. But I've got two examples here just to show you, but you can apply it to loads of other examples as well. And we're going to use this checklist, um, which um, is a very handy way to show kind of the order in which you can work these things out. So. We're going to start with uh, the first one, which is our dot cross diagram. Now, this is the same method that you would do with um, working out bond angles in standard shapes with no ions. But the only difference that we have here is that actually at this point, we need to um, take into account the charges of these ions. And then if we have a negative ion, like this one here, which I'm going to do first, then what we have to do is we add an electron to the central atom first, then we carry on with our next step. So I'll show you what I mean with that now. So we've got chlorine and uh, four fluorines. So this is chlorine tetrafluoride, uh, and this is a negative ion. So we're going to start with drawing the dot cross diagram first, uh, and then we're going to take into account for that negative charge. So we're going to put chlorine in the middle there, and we have uh, four fluorines going around it. So we have one, two, three, four. So we've got chlorine in the middle. Now, chlorine is in group seven, so it normally has seven electrons in its outer shell. But because we've got a negative charge, that means we've got to add an electron first to the central atom. So the central atom is chlorine, because we've got four fluorines coming from it. So chlorine is sharing four of its electrons with uh, fluorine, which is in here. So we'll put them on there. So there's our fluorines. Uh, so that's four of them taken up. So that means that chlorine would actually have four electrons left, and that's including the extra one that we've had to add. So because it's got four, then ones will pair up. So we've got one up there and one there. So this one is the dot cross diagram for this particular molecule here, the ClF4 minus. Now the next stage that we have to do is work out how many bond pairs and lone pairs we have. So our number of bond pairs, which is BP, is four. The number of lone pairs is two, because we've got two lone pairs on there. Uh, the total bond pairs and lone pairs is six. And at this point, what we have to do is work out the shape of the molecule. And we look at our reference shapes here. Now, these shapes have come from um, um, molecules which have no lone pairs in them. So we're looking at the six here, and we can see that six is octahedral. Um, so it would have... Um, all six bonds that are sticking out of it. So, and I'll show you that in this model here. So, a very simple model, and this might actually help you to, uh, you could do this at home as well, uh, help you to understand these 3D models, because they're quite difficult to understand at times. So, there's our 3D model. So you can see that's what it's based on, which is our octahedral shape. And you can see we've got six different bonds that are sticking out. We've got two poles and one either side, but you can see that we have two lone pairs, top and bottom, so we're going to take that one away, and we're going to take that one away, and as you can see, we have a lone pair on the top and a lone pair on the bottom, and they will repel equally, um, and I went through this in the second video as well, so if you're not sure what, what I'm talking about, then click, just click on the link below, and you can have a look in more detail, but these repel equally, these lone pairs, and we're left with a square planar shape with a bond angle of 90 degrees between each of these different bonds there. So you can see that's 90 degrees. So that's what we're going to draw out. So our molecule will look like this. Cl, two that's going away. So we'll put F there, F there. Two that's coming towards you. That's fluorine. 
two fluorine there. And the bond angle between each of these is 90 degrees. And the name of this is called square plated. Now we know this molecule has exactly 90 degrees um, between each of these because according to the um, electron pair repulsion theory, um, these, they, these bonds will actually repel equally. And because they'll repel equally, we get exactly 90 degrees between each one of them, between each one of these here. And we have also, obviously, we have two lone pairs, top and bottom as well. So they're repelling equally, uh, and that's actually forcing these um, to um, repel in terms of 90 degrees. So that's the angle that we've got there. Now, the next one that we're going to come on to is NH4+. Plus. So this is just, a, 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 again, it's the same method, uh, except this time we've got a positive ion. So we're going to start by looking at um, our dot cross diagram first. So we're going to put uh, nitrogen, which sits in the middle. Now, because it's a positive charge, uh, we remove electrons. And because we've only got a 1+, plus, uh, we only need to remove one electron. So nitrogen is in group 5. It normally has 5 electrons in its outer shell, but we remove one because of the positive charge. So this nitrogen actually only has 4 electrons, and we're going to add our hydrogens in there as well. So there's our hydrogens, and they're going to share an electron as well. They're going to, it's effectively on there. Now this, obviously this is a, just a diagrammatic pur uh, purpose, so this is just purely to work it out. Chemically, it doesn't actually work quite like this, because NH4+, plus, uh, one of them is actually a data of covalent bond. So both of the electrons from nitrogen is actually donated to the hydrogen. But So this is purely just a model to help you work out the shape. Um, chemically, it actually doesn't, uh, it doesn't exist in this form, just to make you aware of that. So once we've worked out our actual shape, we see that we've got um, bond pairs and lone pairs, and that's what we need to work out now. But you can see we've got four bond pairs. We don't have any lone pairs. That totals us up to four in total. Um, now, because we don't have any lone pairs to take into account for this molecule, then actually what we can say is um, that this is just standard tetrahedral. So our tetrahedral molecule um, will look something like this. So we have uh, nitrogen, uh, we have a, one going away or one coming towards us, and a one like that. And this whole molecule, like I say, is, is positively charged. And in theory, um, what you should have is this should be a dative covalent bond. So effectively what's happening is the nitrogen is donating both electrons. So that's chemically, that's actually what's happening. Um, if you want to um, check up with that, there is a video that looks at dative covalent bonding. If you just click on the link below uh, and you can find out why it's done like that. Um, so this whole molecule actually has a positive charge. Um, and we call this obviously tetrahedral, in this case, and um, our bond angle between each one of these is 109.5, and that is how you work out the shapes and the uh, bond angles for molecular ions. Um, I hope that helps. Bye.